one. Okay, so I've had plenty of what I would consider paranormal experiences before, but this is the only one that's really happened to me consistently. When I was around 10 years old, my family got a beautiful white Great Pyrenees named Kimba. He was an absolute giant, but he was also the sweetest and most gentle dog I'd ever been with. He was very quiet, and as he got older, he spent most of his time sleeping and breaking up fights between our two other smaller dogs. His favorite spot to sleep in by far was in the corner hallway, right in front of the house's master bedroom. This is also just to the left of my own bedroom door. He slept on his side, and took up almost the whole hallway. Whenever I'd leave my room at night, and I'd pass by him sleeping, I'd always wave at him and smile. He loved my mom and I, and would always follow us to the door whenever we left the house. One morning over three years ago now, I was abruptly woken up at like 5.30 a.m. to the sound of my mom crying and shouting right outside my door, obviously very concerned and distressed. I rushed out of my room and saw her kneeling on the floor crying next to Kimba, right in his favorite sleeping spot. His body was cool and stiff. The rest of the morning was very sad. Time passed and we got Kimba cremated. He now sits in an engraved urn above our fireplace. It's been over three years since Kimba's passing, but I still see him. I stay up very late each night, and I end up leaving my room late at night a lot to go to the kitchen, bathroom, etc. And every so often I will see Kimba. It's never been very clear, but I can always make out his size, color, the vague shape. Every time I see him, it's in the same spot where he died. He's either laying down sleeping or getting up as if he's about to follow me into the kitchen. I can only see him for no more than two seconds. This has been occurring every once in a while over the past three years, but it's become increasingly common over the past few months that I've been working the night shift at my job. Now I see him at least once a week. I leave the house around 10 p.m. usually when the house is already dark, and I'll see him getting up off of his resting spot and walking towards me briefly as if he's about to follow me to the door like he always used to when either me or my mom left. It's comforting to think that he might be sticking around to see me off each night. Every time I see him now, I smile at him and wave goodbye. My mom, who always seems to have a connection to the paranormal for some reason, also tells me every so often that she saw Kimba in that hallway corner. I'm glad it's not just me. Anyway, I feel like seeing ghosts of past pets can't be that uncommon of an experience, so feel free to share your stories if you have any. I'd love to read some. 2. This is a story about an experience I had many years ago. While it didn't scare me very much at the time, as time has gone by, the creepiness of it has slowly become more apparent to me. To this day, my mother doesn't really like talking about it, and while the idea of sharing it doesn't bother me, I don't think I've talked about it very much either. It seems like the appropriate thing to share here is, and maybe some of you could throw some light on it for me. When I was very young, maybe 14 or 15, I was living with my mom in a small town in central Texas. It wasn't exactly tiny, but the town still felt ramshackle, like it was left behind by the bigger cities and urban areas in the surrounding county. Thick forest and farmland hemmed the town on pretty much every side, and we lived in an old house on the very edge of town. The road leading to it turned off from one of the main streets, then quickly turned from asphalt to gravel, and from gravel to just dirt. It was about a quarter mile long, and our house was pretty much the very end of it, with two larger properties on either side. There were lots of houses, mobile homes and RVs up and down the road, but our house was the closest to the forest. It was perched on the edge of a very steep incline that led right down to a creek, and from there straight into the woods. The house was actually slightly slanted because of this. You could place a marble on the floor in any room and it would roll in the same direction every time. It wasn't a great place to live, yeah, but it was the best my mother could afford at the time. I wasn't exactly the bravest kid, and the forest spooked me quite a bit. 
I didn't like being out there alone, but it was fun to explore when I was with friends, and I can never recall encountering anything weird. Sometimes when it got dark, we would stand on our back porch, which overhung the slope, and we'd make noises trying to get coyotes to bark back at us. One day, kind of out of nowhere, my mother mentions that she heard someone shouting in the woods the afternoon before. She had been standing in the kitchen with the back door open, and heard what sounded like someone calling for help. I remember her saying she didn't do anything about it because the voice sounded almost mocking, like it was making fun of someone, and she assumed it might just have been some teenagers playing. A couple days later, I had a similar experience. I was standing in the kitchen, the sun was going down, and I was washing the dishes. I had the kitchen window open, and I heard it clearly, coming from down the slope in the forest. Ugh, help me, help me were the words as far as I can remember them. They repeated once more, then stopped. I remember being very confused because they sounded just like how my mom had described them. My best description is that they sounded inauthentic. It was almost like someone was doing that breathy speaking thing that people do when they try to sound like they're shouting, but they actually aren't. The voice was rough but high-pitched. Like a guy trying to sound like a girl, if that makes any sense. I told my mom and she was freaked out since we had both heard pretty much exactly the same thing. She is a very religious woman and insisted we pray to protect ourselves from whatever was going on. I wasn't and still am not religious at all, but that was the last either of us ever heard anything like that. We lived for less than a year in that house. We didn't move because of strange happenings, but rather because that summer we had a lot of heavy rain and the slope the house was built on was actually collapsing, causing the house to tilt even more than before. Anyways, that's my story. I'm not really much of a believer in the paranormal, and to this day, I've summed it all up to I don't know. But I'm interested to know what you guys think might have been going on. 3. My mom and I went to a local antique store to ask if we could sell them something we've been trying to get rid of that's not our style. They told us they could not buy from private sellers, only auction houses. The lady was welcoming, but she was passively telling us that we could not afford anything in this store. We decided to look around anyway because my mom and I like to admire things. We were the only customers in there and I felt slightly uncomfortable because... I didn't want to ruin anything or break something. Everything in there was thousands of dollars, so I mostly kept my hands to myself and admired with my eyes. I told my mom I was afraid to touch something just because I knew I could never buy any of it. I let go of that feeling and decided just to enjoy the experience. One little detail I'd like to add is that I ate Doritos before I came. I may have had a slight amount of Dorito dust on my fingers, so I made a joke with my mom about how I could be leaving a little Dorito dust on the antiques I touched. We both laughed about it. Then the giant AC turned on, which I also happened to be standing next to, and scared the crap out of us because it was so loud while the store was so quiet. Then the lady who had helped us before came and asked us how we were doing. I thought to myself that it was funny that she came right after my Dorito dust joke. As we were leaving that room, my mom asked me if I was ready to go, and I said yes, but we continued through another room. After that room, we were headed into another when I realized I had to pee. I was going to wait, but then I saw that I was standing directly in front of the ladies' bathroom door, so I said, may as well, and used the bathroom. I admired the beautiful inlaid table and Madonna bust in front of the toilet and finished my business. My mom had moved into another room, and I found her by her humming. It was a small room with a desk in the center and a window on the wall in front of it. I looked at the desk and had a mental image of what seemed like myself, and a Georgian gun with my hair pulled up and a few ringlets dangling from a button. It also felt like that wasn't myself but some other woman. I never saw her face, only felt her back as she was writing something at the desk. She wore a large white dress with small flowered fabric, I then felt a kind of slight dizzy and haziness in my head. I also felt like I had a little sick in my throat. My mom pointed out a polite desk. I admired it. 
Then, as we peeped into another room, I kind of shook myself a bit and said to my mom, I don't belong here. She replied saying that I guess it's time for us to go. So we said our goodbye as we walked out, and I related my experience to my mom as we got into the car. My mom is black, and I am half black, half white. I pass for white, so initially I do not look black. So my mom suggested that this spirit was tolerating our presence but got mad when I used the restroom. My mom was laughing and impersonating a British lady saying, How dare she relieve herself and inside too? That made me laugh, and then I rubbed it in with the Dorito dust theory. My mom told me to write this down so I never forget it. I've never experienced anything like this before, so it took me by surprise. I feel as if this may be one of the spiritual gifts that I didn't know I had until now. 4. When I was 11, in 1974, we moved into a house built in about 1900. It was built on the site of an earlier house, and this was in rural Virginia near Civil War battlefields. Our house had been vacated by an old man who had lived there for 50 years, and his wife had died in the house years before. It left a lot of family junk behind, trunks full of clothes and letters written during World War II, old furniture. I loved exploring the house and digging through all the old belongings. My parents were slowly cleaning it all out and remodeling. One day, I went up to the attic to look through some trunks. I looked through some old photos and letters, then opened a trunk that had a collapsed hoop skirt and some old long dresses. While I was digging through the trunk, I heard someone coming up the attic stairs. I was sure it was my little sister following me. I was kneeling next to the trunk and looking towards the stairs when I saw the head and shoulders of a young woman I didn't know coming up. She was looking down at her feet and walking normally up the stairs, making climbing noises. As she came up, I noticed she had on a long tube dress and was holding the front of it up as she climbed the stairs. I could see ankle-high boots with short heels. When she got to the top of the stairs, my eyes were bugging out at this point. I could see all of her. She was wearing a Civil War era dress with a hoop skirt, and her dark brown hair was in a snood in the back. She stopped to smooth down her dress, and then took a step towards the piles of trunks and junk. I could clearly see her face and clothing. She looked like a real human, not see-through or ghosty. At that point, she saw me crouching by the trunks and looked startled. Then she disappeared. And I never saw or heard her again. I was shocked, but not afraid. I kept that hoop skirt and played with it for months, until it disintegrated with age. Later, my mother told me her own spooky story from the house. My dad had gone to work and my sister and I were at school. She decided to vacuum the downstairs, so she turned on the vacuum and got started. She became aware of the sound of breathing and ignored it. The breathing got louder and louder until she couldn't ignore it. So she turned off the vacuum and listened, scared of course. It occurred to her that it might be the old man's wife who died looking for him. So she explained where Mr. X had gone to live. She explained that we loved the house and were going to fix it up and take good care of it. After she explained, the breathing slowly faded, quieter and quieter until it ended. Mom never heard or saw anything else unexplained in that house. But she's convinced Mrs. X had come to visit her husband and couldn't find him. So she contacted Mom by breathing to get her attention. 5. Most incidents you hear or stories you listen to have no sense but for the victim. It's as true and scary as anything. Here goes the incident. So I live in India with my mother and sister, and my father, due to his job, is mostly away. In fact, I see him rarely more than a week in a month. So two years ago, he was away as usual, and I went to visit my mother, or rather live with her for a few days so as to keep her company. So it happened one day. It was in October. There was this blackout that happened due to a storm earlier, and the radio said it would be two hours to get power back. So I, along with my mother and sister, were sitting in my sister's room when she insisted on hearing a scary story, and for some reason, she insisted my mother tell a story that, according to her, 
was my mother's most scariest moment in her life. The story goes like this. After my sister was born, she's two years older, my mother became ill and she was advised by the doctor to spend some time in a less polluted place. So my parents went to this farmhouse that my grandmother owned to spend some time to help her recover. She went to the house for the first time. She felt very uncomfortable. And she recalls that my sister, who's very quiet normally, kept crying every time. The place was very remote with no sign of houses in close proximity. Moreover, the house had a garden that had huge trees and a lawn that had been unattended for a very long time. So when they moved there, my mother used to see a shadow. At first, she saw this merely as a symptom of her weak health, but one day, it turned into a nightmare. My father had gone to Australia for a business trip, and my mother was alone with my sister and a maid who lived near the house. It was the same night as the night I was hearing the story. Dark, stormy, and quiet. It was about six o'clock, and the maid went away. Right when it was eight o'clock, my mother was in the kitchen and heard something. It was my sister crying very loudly, and it was something that was not normal. She rushed to the room to make her quiet, and when she went to her room, she saw something very strange and scary. The room was lit with an emergency lamp. It was very bright, but it was for some reason very dim at that time, and she could see right beside my sister's crib that there was a shadow. My sister looked at it, crying very loudly. My mother was terrified and suddenly screamed and started citing holy chants. And mysteriously, the window opened immediately without anyone touching it. It wasn't a windy night. She freaked out and immediately grabbed my sister and sat there holding her for a long time until they both fell asleep. She was awoken the next morning by the maid and she was so freaked out that she told it to her. The maid was also scared and decided to stay with them that night along with her, the maid's husband. Fortunately, nothing happened that night, but my mother could hear strange sounds coming from near the child's room late at night. The maid continued to stay with him for a week until my father came home. And the most strange thing happened three days after this incident. It was a morning, and a man came to the house from the courier service that my father used to work with, with some of his documents. As soon as my mother came out and did the formalities on behalf of my father, the man suddenly said something strange. He said that the presence in this house is not happy because of her arrival and is very angry. He also told her to always keep her hair tied. And then he said the worst thing, that the presence is always standing behind her. My mother was so freaked out that she started sweating. He said that he was a sort of priest. In India we call them pandits. And he can feel and see their presence. He advised my mother to do a small religious ceremony and wear a special holy necklace from the temple. He then went away. And the most interesting part was remaining. My father, upon his return, brought the very same necklace for her and my sister. My mother related every part of this story to my father and especially told about that man. My father later inquired about the courier in his office. But to his surprise, no such employee has worked there, ever and the documents delivered came right from Australia, so no one knew of their arrival. This incident still haunts my mother to this day. Even I got chills after hearing this. Hey everybody, Hal Freezer here, and thank you very much for listening to 5 True Paranormal Stories, episode 199. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Okay, it's currently 2.30 in the morning, a little bit after. I basically need to keep myself awake for another hour and a half to get these videos finished. Uh, then I'll crash for six hours, get up, and then have to take down all my curtains and blinds uh, for the window people. Well, whatever they end up doing, I hope they're quick about it, and I hope they don't touch or move things. That really annoys me. The last workman I had in the house touched my guitar. No reason to but apparently it was in their way, leaning up against a wall. Not actually in their way. Pet peeve of mine, don't touch my stuff. Especially when it's in a situation where you need to wear a mask to enter my house. <sighs> okay, grumble, 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 enough of that. 
Happy freezer, happy freezer. Calming down, there we go. Okay. With that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourself.